everybody, it's the Mad Master here. I'm just doing another video. Yeah, put my hair. I want to see my hair at least, um, or my lack of hair. So, just doing this video about the recent uh, debate between Jackson Hinkle and Sam Cedar. I was gonna do this video the other day, and I got busy. Actually, uh, went on a trip yesterday. I've been going on a trip to another county uh, to work out at a gym for certain reasons <laughs> the last month or so and it's been a pain in the ass um as far as literal pain but that's good because that means no pain you know i'll have gain from pain but um anyways enough about that so uh so i've been i mean as, as far as my days off there's one of my three days off that i have as i do that and usually at the end of the work day i'm just like oh, i don't want to do anything you know so, which I've worked four days in a row, 10 hour days. So anyways, I watched the debate and I'm not like a, I'm a fan of Jackson Hinkle, but I, you know, I'm not a Marxist Leninist like he claims to be. I think it's a, a failed ideology, honestly, you know, that type of a combination. Marxism, not necessarily all hundred percent, but Leninism, you know, there's a book, called the people's tragedy that talked about all that and Lenin and his whole thing. Not that, uh, imperialism is a high stage of capitalism. Uh, and a couple other writings actually had some decent analysis of capitalism, but as far as Lenin goes, but I'm overall very anti uh, Leninist. However, just like when I watch Dick Sexenhammer and he talks about how he loves Trump, I'm like, eh, cringe, you know? So I'm just kind of like, I take pieces of other people's, commentary as far as what they're saying and i can see the truth in 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 all these messages is like ha you know parts of the truth and i put them together so that's how i do that with these people like jackson hinkle for example but anyways i think jackson hinkle is a lot more of an honest actor than someone like sam cedar so and he's using facts and he's coming from a more progressive, not Marxist Leninist. Uh, and he's 22. So I don't even know if that's, you know, I don't even know if he, he's, he considers himself an American patriot too. So who the hell knows, but who cares what he labels himself? His message is on point with regards to attacking the democratic party, especially nowadays and how they are not uh, liberal or leftist in the way that they proclaim to be. And that's totally on point. So watching the debate, the first thing I noticed what he was he was on the attack. Jackson Hinkle was just blah 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 blah, just hitting hitting it really hard, you know. And Cedar was just kind of more a little more like he does he does this to people, he interrupts people. They both interrupted each other. Let's face it. So, but I don't think I, I don't think uh, Sam Cedar was used to debating someone like this because they usually it's a libertarian or you know right winger that he debates and stuff and it was kind of weird coming from the left of where he usually goes and i think basically you know obviously uh, jackson hinkle won the debate because he he did make some good points and he had sam cedar doing what my my certain family or certain family members do like Oh, what's wrong with money and power? What's wrong with, you know, when you attack someone who used to be on the left more than they were, and then they use these weird, like, distracting kind of comments to get out of the debate. This is exactly what Sam Cedar did. I don't know the logical fallacy specifically that it, that it refers to. But, for example, like the whole thing about the State Department funding, like... I don't care about the State Department. I don't care, you know. Well, the State Department funds these wars. What do you, you know, that's what Jackson Engels will try to get get at. And it just, it just seems like more and more that the left that's just five years ago was against the military industrial complex, was against big corporations, big tech, big pharma, all that stuff has totally screwed the pooch and sold out completely and utterly so much disgustingly in this way that is fucking infuriating and i don't know what it was i don't know if it's because of trump and like oh well, we all gotta unite against trump even if it's like a neocon like david Frum could write an article in our guest editorial what a great guy 
over a million Iraqis dead, but oh, he's a great guy. Because he's against Trump. You know? And this has just broke people's brains in the United States and the West because I don't know if it was just always a distraction. You know, going into like Matt McKinley quantum of conscience thing, like they're the uh, graduated animal farm, as he calls them. I'm listening to his, his book, uh, Reality, if you can see. Very interesting stuff. I disagree with a lot of it, but I like a lot of it too. So he talks about some of this stuff. It's so funny. He was, he's, a, he's definitely a former Republican, so it's a little hard when he attacks like leftists or liberals or something. But he doesn't do it too often. He just says like, but he's like, oh, well, the, the right wings are the same. They're the same ones still. He just like throws a little bit of these things in there. But for overall, it's really good. I highly recommend it. Um, believe it or not, just these little quips. They're very little and very scattered in, in there. So... You know, the graduated animal farm like it's like uh the controlled opposition would be a, a better way to put it it's like you know the graduated animal farm is like these people that don't really know that you know they're they have a piece that they they proclaim they have a little bit of the truth and everything but you know i followed all these people back in the day like i used to watch the majority report and i used to listen to the majority report because they were on this thing air america that was in our town on the radio. So I used to listen to that. And I first heard the Young Turks back then. I was like, ah, I don't like the, the Young Turks. I didn't like the radio show. I was, I was on early and really early in the morning. And it was just annoying. It was like, who are these people? I just didn't listen to them. But um, once I started going on uh, YouTube, then I started watching them way later. And I remember them from back then, like mid, early, mid 2000s. So whole thing with Sam Cedar though, it's like, this guy is just this one of these people that's been in the system so long and this this and been in this media system and it's like you this gradualism that just your stag this stagnant gradualism of this neo these neo you know supporting neoliberalism basically so and i don't even think it's something that he's conscious of like i think sam cedar is actually smart a smart guy i think he's way smarter than shank Huger or anna kasparian he's way just he seems like he has a shit like he knows a lot of his shit. That's the sad thing about this. So when I see him just totally oblivious to a lot of things that Hinkle is saying, it's just like, it's really sad. And I think this happens to a lot of these people. It's just like they become so entrenched. Their their cognitive blinders are put on because of their years in the system. Even though, you know, 20 years ago, he's like, no, the war in Iraq is wrong, blah, blah, blah. He was friends with uh, RFK. I'm, he was on Ring of Fire with uh, Mike Palpatonio or whatever, Palpatonio or whatever his name is. They were all friends. They were all doing this stuff together, attacking, like, you know, these environmental violations and corporations at Big Pharma and all this stuff. They were talking about all this stuff, like, you know, GMOs and, like, you know, some of that stuff. He was part of that, that whole thing. But no, now he's just like another lemming in the system. It's just like, and hearing Hinkle attacking him, and then these people on the show with him are defending him and like playing uh, defense for him. You know, it's just like, it's so sad. It's just really sad. It's really depressing hearing these people sell out so bad. And he's especially depressing because, you know, Chink Uger's always been kind of a jackass, fucking, like, a big fucking jackass. That's He's always been like that. I ain't always known that. So it's like, it's not as, like, it's not as personal to see him sell out. It's like, yeah, you know, he's one of those egomaniacs, possible narcissists that sold out to the system. But, like, when you see Sam Cedar, who he legitimately seemed, like, legit, like, <laughs> he legitimately seemed like a, a good, you know, left wing person. Now, he hasn't sold out like Rachel Maddow is sold out because that was another person he used to, you know, hang around with too on the shows and stuff. Um, but he definitely sold out. He's definitely, you know, apologist for neoliberalism. Now, he's kind of, I guess I would call it controlled opposition. It's like, oh, well, I question the squad. I question AOC. Yeah, yeah, right. You hardly do it all. And you, when you do, it's just like softball kind of way, you know, like, well, I'd rather have her than, and then he's, you know, the, the way these excuses that he used during the debate, like, well, their politicians are all corrupt anyways. I'd rather have them in there. Uh, they're all terrible people. Uh. It's like, dude, well, why not support third parties? Why, why are you even debating Jackson Hinkle if you think they're all corrupt? Aren't you 
in, in essentially agreeing with him on what he's debating about. That's the, the, you know, the, the, the truth is hidden in these little, these little nuggets that are throughout the debate, these little statements that Cedar says. And you look, you look back at this debate and you're just like, holy shit. Now, also, the, he selectively edited out portions of the debate on his own channel. Cedar did. You've watched Jackson, the full thing with Jackson Hinkle. He has it on his channel. So that's pretty pathetic, too. But these people are sad. It's sad. They get comfortable in the system. They think, oh, well, it's better than nothing. Blah, blah, blah. And it becomes this perpetual, self-perpetuating cycle. This is actually, Taibi has talked about this. This is a weird mat two different Matts that have talked about this. Taibi has talked about this and Matt McKinley talks about it in his book. Because like, both people talk about this self-perpetuating cycle of this system that keeps, this corrupt system that keeps itself in place. Oh, well, next by next election, well, we got to vote those Republicans out. Next election is so important. And then nothing changes. And oh, the next election, oh, these Democrats are so terrible. Nothing changes. It's just the same stagnant system as something that Cedar cannot see the forest from the trees about. And that's really what people like Henkel or Jimmy Dore are trying to say is that the system is rotten. You know, it needs overthrowing, you know, maybe not by a, a bunch of QAnon people, but you know, nevertheless, you know, it, it needs change. And that's the whole thing. It's like, I've gotten older, I've gotten more radical. I, I'm probably an anarchist at this point to some extent, you know, as far as a Michael Malice sort of-ish style anarchist, not a, not like a, a Antifa, like 20 different piercings and soy milk uh, lattes and like, you know, I'm they, them, whatever, you know, like supporting the coronatarianism or anything like that, you know, wearing triple N95s and having green hair and anarchist, um, you know, more of an old school kind of, maybe I'm anarcho-centrist because I'm not into the capitalism thing totally, but I still, I think people should be free to associate and to sell their goods, but I don't, I'm also not in the left wing, like part of it either. Sort of an anarcho-centrist. Wow. That's a really radical concept, but yeah, and Sam Cedar, I don't know. You know, I'm just saying like, I don't know if I really am an anarchist, but I just, you know, I, mean, I critique things. That's what I do. So, yeah, Sam Cedar is just a sad sack of shit. You know, I mean, it's so sad because he had so much potential. Like Air America, like listening to him, he, he did he did stand for a lot of good things. He was a he seemed like a decent guy. And maybe it just was my naivete at the time, not seeing the forest from the trees myself, that these, you know, these people are just supporting this self-perpetuating cycle of very slow gradualism while keeping the corrupt systems in place. Oh yeah, we'll have a little bit of crumbs for the people here and there. You know, it's just the same self-perpetuating system. Not really radical change, you know? I mean, it's just like, even fucking, what was it? Charles Krauthammer, of all people. Was it, is that his name? Yeah. A, a total right-winger, right-wing like icon of, uh, you know, the media and stuff. He said we'd have Medicare, Medicare for all in five years. Like he's more, I mean, it's almost like this weird, uh, reluctant like admission that he he liked it. it if, if you read these articles by him, when he was talking about that, like if a guy like that is less gradualist than Democrats about all the, all these changes they want to make, then you got to watch out for that. And that, you know, that's I mean, that's crazy to think that Charles Krauthammer. Um, I think that's his first name, Charles, um, was more into Medicare for all than like AOC, but it might be true because these people are fucking, they're sellouts. They, they'll pretend they'll, they won't walk the walk. They'll talk the talk, but they won't want to walk the walk over and over again. Obama, you know, all these people just, it continues just the, the rot is continued and it's become worse and worse. And that's, that's part of the reason why just for Ale the Alexander Tots out there. That's part of the reason why I am so rapidly into this, you know, against these narratives that are being pushed for, for the medical crisis that we're in, because it's so fucking hypocritical and contradictory in the way that they're implementing these things. That is a fact. You know, like I said before, you know, if they would have had incentives, $2,000, right? 
for the jab, right? $2,000 each person. In addition to the 2000 or, you know, whatever, or 3500 or whatever they gave before, 3200 giving before. Oh, we're going to do $2,000. You're not a bad person. We understand, you know, we can have these public debates about this and, you know, we can have different scientists debate each other on national TV, blah, blah, blah. You see, that would r resolve your problem. But no, censor them. Ban them. Oh, take them off. Oh, they're misinformation. You know, oh, there's totally safe and effective jabs. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, there, there's no, there's no problem. Oh, it's going to be over now in summer of 2021. Fucking bullshit. We're still fucking living under this. So that's why I attack the system because I saw the rot coming from the Trump thing because the Trump thing happened and then people lost their fucking collective minds over Trump, who is, to be fair, not the, you know, not the, not the greatest person in the world. I'm not going to say that, but they they all they seem to to focus this one myopic thing about Trump and blow it out of blow it up out of proportion and and support these horrible people and excusing these horrible people because I think there's a nefarious sinister agenda with the Trump der derangement syndrome. These people with that because they are like, oh, well, now we can be friends with these neocons. They're so great now. Oh, I'm going to be hanging out with Dick Cheney. Just, just imagine, like, fucking, like, Obama. Like, Obama hanging out with Dick Cheney. Yeah, we're smoking some cigars, me and Dick Cheney. We're so great, you know? Just, I mean, it's it's not that removed from a Michelle Obama hanging out with George W. Bush, is it? Disgusting. These people are disgusting. These elites, they're fucking, they're, they're, they're fucking with us, right? That's what I'm trying to say in these videos. I don't fucking care. People... I know people die from the virus. I know people die and it's bad. And I know the fucking shit. You know, I know all this stuff. It's not fucking, I'm not trying to say anything about that. I'm trying to say these people are crooks that you're listening to. We need to change the fucking system. That's what I'm trying to say. So yeah, anyways, this is about Sam Teeter versus, or Jackson Inkle versus Sam Teeter. Sam Teeter is a, is a totally cucked sellout fucking person entrenched in the system total cognitive blindness and total hypocrisy about what he used to be kind of reminds me of a few relatives that have, you know, it, that, that's what the debate reminded me of. Like, what's wrong? Like what I had a relative say, who used to be a fucking protest in the Vietnam war. You know, he was in Chicago, the Chicago eight, all that shit. Abby Hoffman, he was in that fucking protest. He's like, Oh, I was just, I was just in the uh, protest against pussy. It's like, uh, it's just an excuse because you don't want to talk about these difficult things. You don't want to face yourself. You don't want to face that difficult part of yourself that sold the fuck out. That's all. Peace out.